Hi, I'm Callum from Time Valley Motorhomes and this is the handover of the Vessa Car 560. So as we start the walk round on the driver's side of the vehicle first, the first point you get to is your freshwater fill up point. So this is where you stick your hose pipe into the vehicle and fill it with water. So remove the cap which is lockable via the key, the habitation key which is this round one here. Put your flat end of the hose into the vehicle and connect the other end to the tap. Carry an assortment of tap fittings as it's mainly just a brass tap on site. So you need a few hose pipe ends, hose into there and fill it until it either overflows or until you look on the control panel and know how much water you've got on board. If you can't get water to the vehicle in a hose, underneath this cover here, this is a 12 volt point. So that cover lifts off and you can put a submersible pump into the water the other end into here and it'll suck the water out the aqua roll the container into the motor pump. to drain off your fresh water this is your fresh water drain off point so that's if you've taken on contaminated water you're not using the vehicle for a while or you drain it down for the winter this is an electronic controlled dump valve which the switch will be above the habitation door and you would allow this out it's very important in the winter that you drain it off so it doesn't cause any damage you've got a slide out locker here so this is your wet locker so you can keep all your leveling ramps all your hooker blades all your clotty wet muddy stuff in here so that you're not trailing them into the vehicle Vent for your Aldi boiler, so this will work on gas and electric, but on gas it will allow fumes out, so this is an exhaust manifold for the gases through the heating and hot water system. But it also gives a location of where the boiler is on board, so the boiler will be behind here. Storage. To hook the vehicle up if you are charging it at home or you are charging it on a site, you get your hooker blade. Lift the collar, slide it on here, hook the vehicle, then hook the site and do it in reverse order when unhooking so that you're never walking around with a live lead. And you also do have an external TV connection point there, so if you are on a super site, carry a length of coax, it's F connection on in the motorhome and you can use their aerials by plugging into the post instead of the aerial on the roof of the vehicle. External shower point which is cold water fed so that clips in there on the other end of the gun on the other end of the hose you do have a gun so you can hose the dogs, the boot, boots, the kids, the bikes off. But you will need the pump on inside the vehicle to get a pressurized flow of water. Down here you've got another drain off point, but this is your waste water drain off point, so this is your dirty water, so this is anything that you put down a plug hole, goes into a separate holding tank. And on the way out of your site, you want to get rid of that because you don't really need to be driving around with the added weight of wastewater. Set toilet. So to operate your toilet, lift the handle and you'll be able to slide it out. It'll indicate when it's full. And when it's full, you pull it out the van like I've just done. You either carry it or wheel it to the waste disposal point. And to empty grey calf, that needs to come off. Press the orange button at the back, allows a bit of air in, gives it a consistent flow when emptying, tip it out. Once you've tipped it out, if you do put some water in here, give it a rinse, it's normally a tap beside the disposal point, tip the rinse water out, and then go in with a cap full of chemical, which can either be green or blue. If you're using the tablets, you just push it back into the vehicle completely bone dry, flush a pint of water in, followed by the tablet which is in the cellophane wrapper goes into here and it breaks down but that's if you are using the tablet if you're using the liquid a cap full in the liquor set on the back of the vehicle you do have your high level brake light then you've got your twin reversing camera so you've got one that looks down the back of the vehicle and one that looks further back so you can see the bump at all further distance and you've got your full bike rack so you take the strap off pull it, back, pull it down depending on how big your bikes are these go up and down the rails for the bikes then you would 
put your chuck your wheels in and put the strap through the spokes to tie the wheels down and these through your crossbars. We do then advise on some bike lock to go around the bikes to keep them safe and secure when you, when you're traveling. So if you are leaving the vehicle unattended at the service stations or on the site, it's nice and safe and secure. Carpets in there, axial shower points in there, all the winding handles in there. Bridge vents all in, all in light. All the light is controlled from inside the vehicle. This is your LPG locker, so this is your gas bottle. We've got our test bottle on board, so it doesn't come with a bottle. We're showing you how the gas works, so we've put a bottle on board. What you do is, you put the bottle on, Strap the bottle, if it was staying on, top and bottom, so it's nice and safe and secure on board the vehicle. And then to connect the orange pipe to the bottle, which is known as the pigtail, it's left to tighten, right to loosen. So opposite way with it being gas. Nip it up with a gas spanner or an adjustable wrench, or carry one of them in with you in the vehicle. Turn the cylinder on at the top. Turn it off before you travel and make sure the bottle is nice and safe and secure, like I've said, and switched off before you do start travelling. If the gas was struggling to come through, you've got a crash valve here, so you can press this little green button, and that will bring the gas back through the vehicle if the crash sensor has gone off. So you press and hold that for five seconds. Here you have your diesel filler, so if you are filling with diesel fuel, you fill here which is lockable via the diesel cap. Tire pressure's on here, five and a half bar, which is 79.5 PSI. Wear plates on here as it's now been upplated by SV Tech. So your gross vehicle weight, gross vehicle train weight, axle weights are all on there. Engine batteries underneath the floor and toolkit is underneath the passenger seat. Bonnet release is on the side of the dashboard. Inside, starting off with the screen wash, you put your screen wash, lift this cover off with the three tabs, power steering fluid, coolant, brake fluid, oil and oil filler, and then to give or, a jump, give or receive a jump start, this is your earth, and then by side the air filter, if you put your key in here and lift it up, this is your positive for giving or receiving a jump start. So to work your 12 volt control panel, you've got your on off button here in the bottom, which is your master button, which will turn off all 12 volt if you're not hooked up. And when you are hooked up, you'll get 12 volt and 240 volt, which will indicate here that it is hooked up. You always want the active battery to be battery L, which is the leisure battery, which is what it was designed to do, keeping it separate from the engine battery. You can scroll through so you can see that the leisure battery is charging. The vehicle battery is fair there, solar panel is charging the leisure battery but the solar panel does go to sleep when it is hooked up as mains charge is higher than the solar panel could ever supply. You can select and change your battery but like I say just keep it on the leisure battery and you would do that by the middle button here. You've got the internal temperature and the level of dimmer on your lights. Down this side you've got your pump, which obviously supplies the water to the tap, toilet and shower, and it would come up either side that you've got your fresh and your waste water. But your master switch for your lights, your dimmable lights, so if you just press and hold, you can dim them right down, and you do have your on and light on the outside of the motorhome. So like I was saying from outside, I've shown you both fresh and waste water outlets they're electronically controlled valves so to open you just press here for the waste and here for the fresh make sure that in the winter you fully drain these off and there's no water left sitting in the vehicle especially the outside tanks as they are just plastic 
and if we're experiencing frost it could split the tank by forming ice in the tank with the water so we'll just simply open them up you'll hear the valves and it'll drain the water off obviously on the way out of your site from using the van you'll want to drop the fresh drop the waste should i say keep a little bit of fresh in in case you are going to that next site or you are wanting to use your own toilet or have a cup of tea tend to travel around with a maximum of 20 litres of fresh in your main tank and then top up when you get to site. To work your Aldi heating and hot water system, switch on here. Press menu and at the top you can adjust the temperature that you want the motorhome inside to reach so that's 27.5 degrees we've got it set at now this can go all the way to 5 degrees or all the way up to 30 degrees so it's just how hot you want the inside of the vehicle to be and you can adjust that by pressing the plus and the minus below you've got your hot water so if you didn't have any hot water on board or any water on board should i say you'd have that off to halfway it'll run the heating and hot water together or you can put it on what's known as the boost setting, which is a full black bar there. So it'll prioritize the hot water first before circulating the heat around the vehicle and heating the motorhome up. But we want it to run together, so we'll have it half bar. So it's going to heat the motorhome and heat the water up together. Here you have your electric. So you've got the electric off. So if you weren't on electric, you wouldn't have it on. You'd use gas, which is the bottom one which you'd use if you're wild camping. But if you're on a site, you'd use electric. So you've got one kilowatt, which is 750 watts, two kilowatts, which is 1500 watts, and 3000 watts. You can run the electric and gas together should you be away in the winter and it's really cold for the first 20 minutes or so, then turn the gas off. So when it's not green, it's off and allow the electric to continue to heat the vehicle. Three kilowatts may be too high on some sites. It might just be two kilowatts on most sites in the UK. Smaller CL sites abroad, you may have to turn it down to one. Just depends on what you're running at the same time. So don't overload the motorhome. And then you can program timers and things, but I'll keep it nice and simple. And, but if you ever need to reset it, you click reset and you can reset the control panel so you'd have to go back in and select your temperature your water your energy source all again but that's how you use your aldi heating and hot water control panel so in the kitchen you've got one electric hot plate which is the back one here which indicates with the red lights so if you're on a site and you're using the hob so you've got a pan on there don't waste your gas just use the electric hot plate unless you want to use your gas and then you can and you've got your ignition here So, once you've had any of the hobs on, gas or electric, if you do allow them to cool down, so they've got to be cooled before you put the glass down, otherwise there is a chance that you could shatter the glass. And always make sure the cooker hood's pushed all the way back, because if it's not all the way back, the gas might not light, because there's a sensor on here, and it shuts the gas off. Underneath, you have... Your grill and underneath your grill you have your oven and there you can see your ovens lit and you've got a light so you just press and hold the light and you can have a look in the oven directly underneath you've got your isolation plug for your electric hot plate so if that was giving you any trouble you can just pull the plug out In here you do have your draining board which just clips on the edge of the sink and you can drain once you've put your dishes on so all the water will drain back into the sink. 
slots in there you've got some storage in here but you've also got the location of your boiler underneath so this is your aldi boiler does two things obviously heats the van and heats the water 10 liters of water to be precise that it heats in the vehicle in the boiler of the vehicle it's very important that you drain the boiler down and to drain the boiler down there's a little toggle just here so it's directly underneath so if you just have a look you'll see i can get you it's a yellow toggle here and you just flick it up, stand it up on end and that'll drain off all the 10 litres of water in the boiler and you do that in the winter to avoid it from freezing. So when we start experiencing frosts from back end of October to March, April time is when you need to have the vehicle drained down when not in use. It stops the water from freezing here. You drain off the fresh and the waste to stop the freezing underneath the van and you'd also leave the taps open. It'll stop any water from sitting in any pipelines and causing any damage to the taps itself because if the water freezes in a tap, it's a full tap replacement. If the water freezes in here, you've broke your boiler, you've got to replace the boiler. It can. It is just plastic pipes on a motorhome. They're very easy to freeze and break if you leave water in and it's parked up for a long period of time over the winter. Drain it off is the safest way then turn leave all the taps open and put the pump on for 10 seconds to blow any water out of the pump so the pump doesn't freeze because if you leave water in the pump like again it is a replacement job but you can't fix it so drain it all down then when you come to reuse it so the little yellow tap is currently like that which means it's housing water stand it up on end is winterized stand it back down Shut all the taps, shut the fresh and the waste, fill the vehicle via a hose pipe like I've shown you outside. Bring the water through to the tap. So you put your pump on, on your control panel. Go to your cold side of your tap first. Then when you go to the hot side, so get a pressurized floor. As soon as you go to the hot side, it'll cough splutter until you get a pressurized floor of water like this. And it'll do this a few times and you want a pressurised floor so that's it coughing the air out and filling the boiler until you get a pressurised floor of water then your hot water system is primed but this is normal, don't be alarmed, this is normal until it gets going so to operate your Dometic fridge opening the door, the control panel's on the top it's a flush control panel so to turn it on and off you just put your hand on press and hold And it will turn itself off like that and you turn it back on press and hold and it'll turn itself back on you've got three sources this fridge will run off mains hook up when you hooked up so it'll act as a household fridge gas and the gas is turned on if you're you would use this if you're well camping and battery which isn't the leisure battery it's a feed off the engine when it's running and it's designed for when you're traveling to keep your shopping nice and fresh once you've had it on so you've got to have it on beforehand to chill your shopping down because it's no good just putting it on the battery setting chucking your shopping in it isn't going to get cold it's got to be pre-chilled beforehand on either gas or electric or if you're moving from one site to another site it'll keep your shopping nice and fresh or what you can do is you can just put it on the auto so this changes the source i would leave it on auto auto the brain of the fridge will pick out the best source available to the van and it always prioritizes mains hookup so mains hookup first if i was to unhook the vehicle now it will go over to gas and if i was to start the vehicle up it will go over to 12 volt the only thing it waits 20 minutes before lighting on gas once you've turned the engine off if you are going while camping and that's a safety feature in case you forgot to turn your bottle off and you've pulled in for diesel. The last thing you want is for it to be igniting where there's naked flames and naked fumes. So all you do is manually turn it over to gas like so. This is your temperature. So you can adjust the temperature to suit. What I would do is I would always have it on five bar when pre-chilling. So if, uh, if you're lucky enough to keep it at home, what I would do is put it at home, hook it up a few days before you go away. It gives it a good chance for the leisure battery to take charge. 
put your fridge on the day before put your shop in allow that to chill overnight and then you can start the engine unhook the vehicle and off you go until you get to your site or you go wild camping and your shopping is nice and cold so it'll stay chilled when you're traveling until you go back onto gas or electric but bring it bring the temperature down so have it on five when pre-chill and when nothing in once you put your shopping in put on three or four maximum as it's sometimes too strong and can freeze the fridge then last of all when you're not using it leave the door open so just rest the door don't shut the door with any force just leave it open allows air to circulate in and out the fridge as it's got a rubber seal on and stops smells from forming in the fridge in your wardrobe is the location of your aldi glycol tank so this is an expansion tank as the aldi liquid is more as the aldi system sorry is more of a household system and it provides heat to radiators instead of air blown like other systems like at home where it pushes hot water around your system, it can't push water around your system because we have to winterize the vehicle. It pushes around antifreeze. So this is an antifreeze tank, which is glycol. And to top it up, you top it up here, take the cap off. This is a breather pipe. Always run the system up first before you top it up, because if you top it up with it off, you're gonna overfill it. There's a min and a max. Run it up, it'll see where it's actually sitting at because the liquid expands. This has a five year lifespan. Every five years, this should be fully flushed out and replenished with new antifreeze. But and the antifreeze I recommend, if you go on Aldi's website, they recommend five different antifreeze. There's themselves, which is you have to dilute and then five others and i'm sure it's grade g12 that they recommend but have a look if you and i would keep a spare antifreeze in the van just in case you do ever need it you've also got your aerial so your tv aerials in here it's a status tv aerial so it's a pulled aerial so you can adjust this on the booster at the back it's got a blue light so you can adjust the booster should it be too strong or too weak on the booster itself if not you need to loosen the nut off push the stem of the aerial up tighten just brings the aerial further up of the vehicle and you can tilt it to give a better signal and find a better signal as it's a directional aerial it's picking up right the way around the aerial itself so you can tip it to where the better signal is but always remember, bring it back in and tighten it up before you travel so that there's no danger of the aerial getting broken with the wind when traveling. To operate your Fedford toilet, the blue button at the back is your fresh water flush from your main fresh water tank. So you flush it, put a little bit of water in first before you use it, which helps lubricate the seal between the toilet and the cassette. And then you want to open the blade, which is this grey lever here. So you'd open it up, you'd use the toilet. After you've used the toilet, you'd press the blue button again and give it a flush. And then you'd close the blade. If you don't close the blade, you can't get the cassette out the side of the van when it indicates. Which it'll indicate with three green lights underneath the little picture there of the cassette. So make sure you're doing it in that order and always shutting it after use so that if it does indicate that it's full you can get it out outside otherwise it'll be running back in the van and you'll know exactly what you've done you've left the blade open toiletry cabinet toiletry cabinet the light switch is here if you're wondering where it is hot water there is working yeah the hot water system's working as that's very warm towel rail and then in the shower tray itself it's always best that you tie your streams back when you're not using them so there and there when traveling just to stop that from moving and damaging anything with the weight in here including the shower tray all the sides soapy mild liquid with a microfiber to clean no bleach otherwise you'll take the shiny finish off and it'll become a yellow stained and it'll look awful and you'll have to get it painted so no harsh bleaches 
on any of the plastics in the washroom, just mild soapy water to clean. Underneath your dinette seat, you've got the location of your leisure battery. So it is a 105 amp hour leisure battery with your main battery fuse there of 40 amps. This is your pump filter and this is your, fr fr uh, your pump for your hot and cold water system. For your water here, you put your fins for your Aldi and they've all got little bleed points on. So if you're ever having any problems with your Aldi system, you can bleed it by just turning them just like a radiator because that's all that is. It's a radiator but instead of water running through it, it's a glycol from your ex expansion tank in your wardrobe. Underneath the side facing bench seat behind the passenger seat is where you'll find your EC600 unit. So this is your power supply unit. So you've got a black button here, which is a system shutdown button, which will stop all 12 volt from the leisure battery. So if you think you've got a power drain or you're just want, not wanting a power drain over the winter, you can turn that off and that'll turn everything off on 12 volt. 12 volt fuses, which are all listed on the side here of what they do. So ampage, what color they should be, what they do, in here this side you do have all your main trips and your mcbs if you're not receiving power the best way to check is you've hooked the van up still not getting power if the vehicle trips you're getting power so if, if this doesn't trip it's not the vehicle it's where you're getting the electric from charger and heating and hot water switch switches will light up when hooked up you can turn them off so if you're charging it over the winter and you don't want the heating and hot water because there's no water on, you can turn that off and that'll just not allow it to heat the hot water or the heating on mains electric from the Aldi panel on board. But you need to have that on for it to do so. So they'll just light up, like I say, when you hook up. If you've got any problems, try to make sure they're lit before going down any other route. You've also got two gas taps here as well. So you've got a gas tap for, you've got a blue one there, which is for your fridge. And you've got a yellow one, which is for your grill. Which are here. So that's in the open position. That one is blanked off. There's nothing on the bottom. So it's only this one that needs to be open, which is your fridge. So at the front of the van, if you wanted to make the occasional double at the front, using the table, lift it up, press the button on the leg and fold the leg up. Lift the table off the top bar and place it onto the bottom bar. So make sure it's clipped on like it is there and it'll sit there and fill the void. Then what you do is you'd use this bench seat, slide it up, up your base cushion at the back put that cushion back in here and then there's some infill cushions which we'll show you in a moment where they go and how this bed makes up and there you go that's your bed made up so infill cushion can go at the back or in the middle it's entirely up to you this is the backrest from the dinette seat and there's a little infill cushion just goes in the center because obviously that goes around the frame of the seat Pop that in when you're making the bed up. Pop it in there. Pop the infill cushion in and it's all a snug fit so you've got an occasional double bed at the front.